Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today. Welcome to the latest of our Tips and Tricks webinars. My name is Claudio Pillay, and I'm a Senior Content Manager for NetBrain. Today's Tips and Tricks is about automating incident response and problem diagnosis. Today's webinar is being recorded. It will be available on demand from our website, so you can rewatch anytime. Before we get into it, I wanted to talk a little bit about NetBrain. Founded in 2004, NetBrain is the most widely adopted network automation and visibility platform today. More than 2,500 of the world's largest enterprises and managed service providers use NetBrain to simplify network management tasks, reduce MTTR, and provide a top-down understanding of how the network supporting their business works. Why NetBrain? NetBrain's automation is intent-based and 100% no-code, meaning network teams adopting NetBrain don't have to invest time and resources developing software or scripts. If you understand your network's design and how to manage it via CLI, you know how to automate using NetBrain. Whereas typical code-based automation consists of device-level scripts, NetBrain automation is built on a network-level understanding of your infrastructure. Network intents digitize how your network should behave. The abstractions facilitated by network intents make it easy to scale your network operations. One intent can be replicated across your entire network or any subset of the network you require none of which would be possible without NetBrain's vendor-agnostic, holistic view of the network. Our digital twin and dynamic maps are built from live forwarding da data of your network, whether that be traditional, virtual, software-defined, or even cloud. Our tips and tricks act as a sort of companion piece to our ongoing pain point series, where each month we tackle a common pain point in network operations and how we utilize NetBrain to address them. These include webinars on network security, protected change management, hybrid network visualization, and outage prevention. Be on the lookout for the last two pain point webinars later this May and June, and be sure to register. This tips and tricks complements our automated diagnosis webinar from March, Adopting Proactive Automation, which is available on demand from our website. So if you missed it, we encourage you to check it out. Our engineer Nazanin demoed how trigger diagnosis automation can transform the NetOps incident workflow. As shown in that webinar, NetBrain automation can be triggered externally by other IT tools, including network management, monitoring, and observability tools like SolarWinds, Splunk, or PRTG. Email, our new self-service chatbot, and ITSMs, workflow managers, and service desk software, like those from ServiceNow, BMC, or Atlassian. This evolves our NetOps workflows. Intent-based diagnostic information can be gathered as soon as a ticket is created or an event is detected, saving us time troubleshooting and driving down MTTR. But it's not just one way. Just as NetBrain can be triggered into action, NetBrain can also push information to those tools via event-driven webhooks. And with our latest release, NetBrain NextGen, webhooks can be actioned directly from intent diagnosis. If NetBrain detects an issue with your network, it could report it to your ITSM and create a ticket. It could update and close those tickets as well based on the result of the diagnosis, capturing the intelligence of your support team to reduce their workload. So let's see that in action. We begin by opening up a typical ITSM solution, ServiceNow. Here we've started building a ticket. This could be a manually created ticket, but more likely a ticket like this, an interface down detected, would likely be automatically generated by some network monitoring tool. Let's submit the ticket. Like our earlier demonstration for March, this ticket will trigger NetBrain intent diagnosis. But this time, after the automated diagnosis, we'll see the ticket close on its own. So what happened here? The ticket triggered NetBrain troubleshooting and NetBrain determined that the interface is in fact not down. So NetBrain updated the ServiceNow ticket and changed the state to close. Let's open it up in NetBrain and see how that's accomplished. Here's the map generated by the ticket. And on the right are all the intents that were triggered by the automated diagnosis. Clicking on the interface checked intent 
and taking a closer look at the diagnosis. We're able to see that we can call a webhook right from the intent as part of the diagnosis logic. This diagnosis checks for the interface status. If the interface is down, then we get the appropriate diagnosis message. But if the interface is up, we can call a webhook as part of the DEN logic. The payload we'll be sending to ServiceNow is determined by JSON templates we built ahead of time. As you can see, we're sending the ticket ID and the state value. We put the number seven as that is the value for closed in ServiceNow. Let's take a closer look at those payload templates. From the system manager is where we can build the webhook templates. Let's open up the ServiceNow example we just saw being used within the intent to update a ticket. Webhook payloads are typically in JSON format. The key value pairs we want to send here are the ticket ID, written here with a key of sys underscore ID, and the ticket state. The keys are determined by the network tool you're integrating with. In this case, sysid, for example, is the key that ServiceNow utilizes. Here's a little trick. With ServiceNow, we can see that by right-clicking on a field within a ticket. At the bottom, you should see the actual key for that field. We'll need this for the payload template in NetBrain. Of course, another tool might not make that so visible, so you'll have to make sure to read their documentation. As for the value portion of the key value pairs, that's also determined by the third-party software we're integrating with. For ServiceNow, the drop-down fields list all the options, but for the webhook value, ServiceNow intakes a numerical value. That value is the options order position within the drop-down menu list. For example, channel has options for email, phone, self-service, and walk-in. The actual value that we would send in the payload would be one for email, two for phone, three for self-service, and four for walk-in. All right, let's look at some of those other intents triggered by our ticket. So the interface isn't actually down, at least not anymore. We've designed this automated diagnosis to perform some follow-up intents. What if the interface flapped, meaning it went down and then recovered and came back up? Did that affect any of our critical apps? We verify with these four intents. And are there any lingering effects of the port flap? This intent checks for errors. If this intent detects any errors, not only does it send the appropriate diagnosis message, but it also calls a webhook to create a follow-up ticket for further investigation. The port down is resolved, but maybe a technician needs to be dispatched to check the cable. NetBrain can digitize your support team's workflows and automate initial response, follow-up investigations, escalations, and ticket resolution. This marks the end of our tips and tricks. I hope it has shed some light on the power of NetBrain's third-party integrations. We want to thank you once again for joining us and also wanted to share this scannable QR code that will direct you to our website where you can schedule your own demo or check out our new guided tours at your own pace. If you're looking forward to our next tips and tricks, be sure to join us next month. Until then, thank you and goodbye.